We're bringing back an oldie but a goodie by Lori Holt. This is Millie's Dresses, and Lori originally wrote this pattern 12 years ago, and we released it, published by It's So Emma, with new block size, so it's slightly different, and great instructions. And we're gonna be hosting a quilt along at Fat Quarter Shop that starts in February. So today, I'm gonna do a block tutorial that's gonna kinda kick off this sew along, and we're gonna talk all about the quilt. And this time, our sample was made in Mercantile, by Lori Holt for Riley Blake Fabrics. So let's take a look at the quilt. You can purchase the Millie's Dresses pattern in either paper or PDF form at Fat Quarter Shop. You're gonna need three and a quarter yards of background, 16 fat quarters and 16 fat eighths for the dresses and this outer border. You're also gonna need a fat eighth for whatever fabric is gonna go in all four corners, and you will need half a yard for this inner border. And what's great is your leftovers from your fat quarters and your fat eighths are used for your scrappy binding. For your backing, if you use 108 inch wide, you need two yards, and if you're gonna use a 44 inch wide, you need three and seven eighths yards. So grab all your fat quarters, your fat eighths, your background, your borders, grab all your fabrics. This would be great to use with all of your Lori Holt scraps, and I'm gonna do a block tutorial for you today. Now before we start the block, what I wanna do is point out that each dress block uses one dress print and then a different fabric for your collar and your belt unit. So keep that in mind when we're sewing our block. We're gonna be starting on page one and you're gonna take a fabric C rectangle. You're gonna take two matching fabric L squares. On the wrong side of the fabric L squares, I'm gonna use a friction pin and draw a line from corner to corner. And we're gonna be making a flying geese unit and we're gonna be making one for each block. So then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use seam align glue. You could also use a pin, but I definitely think something that holds it in place is gonna give you more accurate results. And I've just glued on this side since I'm gonna throw that away after. I'm gonna to go to my sewing machine, use my normal stitch length and stitch directly on that line as close as I can. Now I'm gonna take a ruler. I like to use the small Creative Grids two and a half by four and a half inch ruler because it's really small. I'm gonna trim a quarter inch away and we're gonna press this toward the fabric L. Then you'll come back and add the other side and it's gonna make your little collar. So you can tell that it's looking good. It looks like a collar. I'm gonna use glue, set it in place. Stitch as close as possible as you can on that drawn line. Trim a quarter inch away, and then we're gonna also press towards the fabric L. And this is your collar unit, and you're gonna be making one of these for each block. Now we're gonna move to page two. You're gonna take a fabric I rectangle, two fabric G squares. You're gonna draw lines on the wrong side from corner to corner, that same technique that you just did. And then on the bottom left, and bottom right, you're gonna place your squares. I'm gonna also use glue. You're gonna be making one of these for each block. And I'm using glue just because this quilt has a lot of pieces, and I find that I have more accurate results with the glue than I do with pinning. And I just want my quilt to look absolutely beautiful, so I that's why I'm using the seam line glue today. Now from here, we're gonna stitch, again, directly on that line. Again, I'm gonna trim a quarter inch away, and this time we're gonna to press toward the white fabric, which is your fabric G, and it will look like this. So this unit should be two and three quarters by five, but you can kind of see it's not exactly straight. So I wanna trim that up before we move to the next step. So I've got a Creative Grids five and a half inch square ruler, and I'm gonna place it on the five inch line and the two and three quarter inch line. And what I wanna do is just get this exactly the correct size. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna put fabric K rectangles on the sides of your flying geese. And I cut mine slightly bigger at one and three quarter by two inches, and I'll show you why. So basically I just cut mine the same height and half an inch longer on the width. 
And then what I'll do is pin by placing my fabrics right sides together. And again, these two fabrics coordinate. So I'm just making sure when I'm sewing my coordinating fabrics that they go together with the dress, kind of like I showed you at the very beginning. Now here we're gonna switch to a quarter inch foot and we're gonna sew with a quarter inch seam. Now from here, you're gonna sew these two together and you can see that I made mine wider and I made mine wider so that we can sew that together and trim down. So to do that, I'm going to fold this in half, make a crease and I'm gonna have this crease line up with the very center point of this flying geese. So I'll put that point right there where I can see it lined up, pin in place and I'm gonna sew this with a quarter inch seam across. And you can see how this hangs over a little bit. You're gonna set your seam and press this direction. Now this should be four and a quarter by five. So what I'm going to do is line up the right side and just cut that across and that gives you that perfectly straight edge. Turn it around and measure five inches. And since we've already trimmed this up earlier, just go to the four and a quarter and trim. And that should be perfectly four and a quarter by five inches. And this is your bodice unit. So then we're gonna kind of move down and start working on our sleeve unit. You're gonna take a fabric J rectangle and a fabric A square. And what you'll do is on the top right, you wanna angle it this way because you're making your left sleeve. So you'll wanna pay attention to the direction. And what you can do is glue that down and then at the same time, if you wanna save time, you can also do the fabric G square, which is gonna go in the bottom right. And you can do these at the same time. What you'll do is stitch directly on the lines and then we're gonna trim. Now we do need to switch back to our open toe foot. Trim a quarter inch away. And this next part is gonna be very imperative to the construction of the block, the way you press. So you really have to pay attention. So we're gonna press this one towards the background and this one towards the green. And then you're gonna take a fabric D square, place this on the bottom left, and you're really paying attention to the direction of the lines and use the glue. Now, if you're not using glue, I definitely would use pins. We're gonna stitch on that line trim a quarter inch away, and then we're gonna to press toward the white. Okay, so this is your left sleeve unit and it should measure two and three quarters by four and a quarter. So before I go on, I'm going to look at that and I have lined up this diagonal line and I'm gonna get it exactly two and three quarters, turn it around and go to four and a quarter and just trim all the sides. Now this is totally unnecessary but this is how I get my quilts to come out really nice and accurate is by doing this extra step. So this is your left sleeve right here. And for the next one, we're gonna be doing the right sleeve. So you're gonna place the A, D, and G opposite and press according to the pattern. And when you're done, it's going to look like this and then this is going to be your right sleeve. And you can see all of these seams will nest. So now we're gonna sew our sleeves to our bodice and I'm gonna put this right sides together. And if you pressed according to the pattern, you're gonna see that one seam goes this direction and one seam goes the opposite direction. So you're gonna place those together and they're gonna interlock. They'll just line up. You're gonna pin right there, pin at the end and at the top, pin. Now, if you like to press open, you could press open and do the same thing and not have to worry about the seams. So it's totally up to you how you want to do this. And this one, the same thing, it will lock just by moving it. So if you just move it down, it automatically stops where that seam is. Now I'm going to change back to a quarter inch seam and I'm going to sew with a quarter inch seam. And what I like to do is remove the pins when I get right to it. Thank you. 
and this is how your unit's gonna look. You're gonna set your seams and then press to the sleeves. When you're pressing, you just wanna go nice and flat and just press instead of moving your iron around like crazy or everything will start stretching. This should be four and a quarter by nine and a half. And so we have the top of our dress done. Now we're gonna move to the bottom and we're gonna take a fabric H rectangle. Now I made this the same width, which is five and three quarters, but I cut my eight and a half inches, which is half inch longer. And I'll show you why in a little bit. Then you're gonna take two fabric E squares, draw a line on the wrong side, and they're gonna go at the top right and the top left, and I'm gonna glue these in place. And you'll see, I just put the glue where it is far enough away from the seam that when we cut, that will come right off so that there's no glue left. So basically, anywhere outside of this zone. We're gonna go back, draw open toe foot, and sew on those two seams. But to save time, what we can do is take our two fabric Fs and our fabric M. I cut this one a little bit longer. So the width is the same, one and a quarter, and the length is four inches on both of these. I cut my fabric M the same as normal. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew these two together with a quarter inch seam before I move back to my open toe foot. And that's gonna help save time. So we'll sew this first and then this. I'm gonna trim these a quarter inch away. And here we're gonna to press towards the blue, and here we're gonna to press towards the white. This is gonna go here, but before we move on, I'm gonna make this where it's exactly the correct measurement because I can tell that some of my background is a little bit off of my seam. So for this, I'm gonna use a six and a half inch square ruler, and I'm lining up the five and three quarter, and I will cut two sides at once, flip that around, and cut this side. Now I don't have to worry about the length because I made it bigger and I can trim down. And then from here, I just wanna make sure that that looks nice. And then that is gonna go right here. Then we're gonna take our fabric B rectangles. I cut these eight and a half by three. So they're actually half inch wider and half inch taller. And I'm gonna pin this and we will sew these by putting our quarter inch foot back on and sewing along both seams. And look at how cute your Millie's dresses is. So now you can see that this is a little bit wider. This is also wider and this is longer, but I'm gonna show you how to make that work. What I'm gonna do is turn the board sideways and I'm gonna draw a line with a friction pin at a quarter inch on the middle part and a quarter inch right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a pin in that quarter inch mark and that quarter inch mark. So you wanna poke your pin right where that line is and right where the line is here. Then make your pin stand straight up, remove it and just pin right before it. So on the other side, you're gonna poke a pin the same way and then you'll just pin at the end. And what's great about this is even though you're wasting a little bit of fabric, you're gonna see how nice this comes out. We're gonna put the quarter inch foot on and we're gonna sew across this seam. And then you'll want to look and make sure that it lines up perfectly, and it does. Now from here, I put this back, and you can see we need to do the same thing here. Mark the quarter inch. You could also mark on the back. It's totally up to you. Line those up. And don't worry about the edges not meeting because I cut them bigger, so don't even worry about that right now. Now, if you've been sewing a long time, you could also eyeball that quarter inch 
but I usually do it with the ruler like I just showed you. And then you're gonna stitch across the ends and you're not gonna worry about these lining up. And look how cute the Millie's dresses is, super cute. Now we're gonna trim this down and this is the part that is the hardest part for me so that I don't accidentally trim it the wrong way. It should measure nine and a half by 12 and a half. So since I didn't make this bigger, that should be totally nine and a half. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just line that up and it's nine and a half, but I wanna get these two strings off. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this, it needs to be 12 and a half inches. I'm gonna use the edge of my ruler on the very top of the block and I'm gonna cut this 12 and a half. Then we need to make this with nine and a half. And since I didn't cut this bigger, I know that that should be my seam. So I'm gonna line up the top of my ruler with the edge, the right of my ruler with the edge of the top. Rotate line it up at nine and a half and you can see that it's minus slightly smaller it's like nine and three eighths so what i'm going to do is just keep this lined up with the edge of the ruler the side of the ruler and go down and your block is nine and three eighths by twelve and a half which is close enough and it's super fun super cute now i did want to mention when i cut all of these pieces bigger the pattern is not written that way. That's just my tip to you to get everything lined up. And I do wanna give you a caveat that Lori would never do that. So I piece totally different than Lori. So you can piece like her or you can piece like me. Either one will work. So we've made the Millie's dresses block and you can see how that looks in the quilt and it looks so cute. Pages two and three are your instructions for your dress. And then pages four to six talk about this border right here. And so our cutting for our dresses and our outer border is in two different sections. When you're making this border, you just wanna make sure you press according to the pattern. Use those same techniques I showed you and it's gonna come out beautifully. This quilt was quilted with the Azure Petite Panograph and we used a cream thread that matched the fabric on the front and it blends with the fabric on the back. It's a cute swirl, so any type of swirl would look great with this. I also think a Baptist fan pantograph would look great. If you don't wanna take on the task of making an entire big quilt, this is an adorable block that you could make. You could just border it and frame it. You could make a pillow out of it. There's so much stuff you could do. You could even just make a long table runner using it. So this quilt we wrote in two different sections where the blocks and the border are separate and that makes it really easy for you to adjust the pattern if you wanna do something much smaller. Let me know what you're gonna be sewing with the Millie's Dresses pattern. We have all the details of our quilt along on the Jolly Jabber blog and I'd love to know if you're sewing along. Comment, let me know, subscribe, and join me every Friday for my weekly live streams and I'll see you soon.